Greetings. I would like to welcome you to our daily weekday Mass, held here at the National Shrine of St. Therese on the Carmelite campus in Darien, Illinois. The Carmelites cherish praying and celebrating with you. This shrine is the blessing of a generous gift from the Margie and Robert Peterson Foundation. Welcome to the National Shrine of St. Therese. We invite you and those who will join us virtually later on during the day. And the intentions for today's Mass are the intentions of the members of the Little Flower Society, the Infant of Prague, and the memorial for St. Betol and Jonas Jubinus, as well as our own intentions. So let us begin our celebration by blessing ourselves in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with each of you. Coming into the Lord's presence, we ask for forgiveness and healing, especially for the times when we restricted our loves only to those that are friends of ours or those that we care. Lord Jesus, you humbled yourself to become one of us. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you showed us the way of, to God's reign. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you sit at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. May the priest, St. Paul, whose only love was the cross, obtain for us your grace, O Lord, so that urged on more strongly by his example, we may each embrace our own cross with courage. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that he may grant you, in accord with the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with power through his Spirit in the inner self, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the holy ones what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now, to him who is able to accomplish far more than all we ask or imagine, by the power at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. The, the earth, earth is, is full, full of the goodness, the goodness of, of the, the Lord. Lord. Exalt you just in the Lord. Praise from the upright is fitting. Give thanks to the Lord on the harp. With a ten-string lyre, chant his praises. The earth is, is full, full of, of the, the goodness, goodness of, of the, the Lord. Lord. For upright is the word of the Lord, 
and all his works are trustworthy. He loves justice and right. Of the kindness of the Lord, the earth is full. The The earth earth is is full full of the the goodness of the the Lord. Lord. But the plan of the Lord stands forever, the design of his heart through all generations. Blessed the nation whose God is the Lord, the people he has chosen for his own inheritance. The The earth earth is full full of the the goodness goodness of the Lord. Lord. But see, the eyes of the Lord are upon those who fear him, upon those who hope for his kindness, to deliver them from death and to preserve them in spite of famine. The The earth earth is full full of the the goodness goodness of the the Lord. Lord. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. I consider all things so much rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in him. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, I have come to set the earth on fire, and how I wish it were already blazing. There is a baptism with which I must be baptized, and how great is my anguish until it is accomplished. Do you think that I have come to establish peace on the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, a household of five will be divided, three against two and two against three. A father will be divided against his son and a son against his father, a mother against her daughter and a daughter against her mother a mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear friends in Christ, what do we make of a Gospel that we just heard? Yeah, in two months we celebrate Christmas, the coming of Christ, the peacemaker. And today he's talking about division. Just the opposite. The scripture readings, both of them today, speak about God's love for us. And I'm sure there are many different ways that we can explain what love means to us, what it means to others. The spectrum is as wide as it can be. But what is Jesus, what is God's love all about? The true love. Well, today we know that one of the symbols that is used for love is fire. Fire is considered one of humankind's greatest discoveries but it also has many biblical references. God used a fiery column when he brought the Jewish people out of Egypt, out of slavery, into the promised land. He talked to Moses in the burning bush. John the Baptist, who prepared the way for the Lord, says, one is coming who will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. And then today, Jesus says, I have come to set the earth on fire. Now we know fire has a tremendous effect 
It can be very devastating. It can also bring about purity. It can bring about a transformation, a change. All of these different explanations give us a little bit of insight into what love is about. What is Jesus talking about when he talks about, I have a baptism to experience? We already know that symbolically he already had the baptism with John the Baptist in the desert. But today he's talking about another baptism. And the baptism he's talking about is the baptism of fire. He's talking about what is going to happen at the end of his life through his passion and death on the cross. When we think about it, the baptism, the fulfillment of that experience happens a little bit later on at Pentecost when the Holy Spirit comes down in, in the signs of tongues, again of fire. So fire plays an important part in life. And thank God for fire, one of the most common ones that right now we're, we're happy that we have heat, that we have something to warm us up and it's going to get cold. That's a physical dimension of it. But the more spiritual dimension is God's spirit comes to us like fire. So as we look at this, looking back and hearing what Jesus is trying to say, he says, I have come to set the earth on fire, and how I wish it were already blazing. He realizes what is coming, and the challenge that is going to be there. He also knows that the message that he brings, the good news that he brings about the gospel, is going to divide people. It is going to pull people apart. And how is that? because some will believe and others will totally disregard him. And when we look at the, the large of family, the family of the earth, we realize when we look at it, how much division there is in our day and age. It is rampant. And it wasn't any different at the time of Jesus. So when he talks about the division that takes place in the family, I don't think there's any family that doesn't experience that in some way. We would like to think that we got the perfect family where everything is fine. But the point is, God has given us a mind, a will to decide which way we want to go. And as much as we want the best for our children and grandchildren, it isn't going to happen because we have a free will and people make decisions, and how painful it is for any family when that happens. But Jesus promised that's what, what's going to happen. And when you look at it from his point of view, how many times did he reach out and care and love people of all kinds? He, there was no exception. Everybody was welcome to his love. Many of them received healing. But when it came to his baptism, during his passion and death, how few people were there that stood with him. So often, that destructive element, that divisiveness, is so much the pain and the suffering of our everyday life. We wish it were different. But we have to respect, just as Jesus respected those who didn't accept him, and who will continue not to accept him, that's part of God's plan. We can't force people. You and I didn't want to be forced, hopefully. Our response to the Lord's God, to, to the Lord, is a, a generous love in giving and of sharing ourselves completely with others. Many years ago, you know, Jesus said, there is no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friends. And I remember the great Russian novelist Dostoevsky, who in his novel, The Brothers Karamazov, has a character speak about love. And here's what he says. 
is that love in action is a harsh and a dreadful thing compared with love in dreams. In other words, love of neighbor is not an easy matter. We realize God's dramatic demonstration of deep love for humanity when we contemplate the crucifix. Jesus' death, indeed, was harsh and dreadful. And then when you realize what Jesus is saying, he says, what I experience and what I have lived, we must live. Well, that's not the message that we want to hear. How often do we ignore and complain about all the sufferings that come to us in so many different ways? We would like to have it different. Sometimes you make believe that it is different. It's like when somebody says, how are you feeling today? Oh, I'm okay, while deep inside we're hurting. We wish sometimes that we in would have it differently, that there would be only peace and that wonderful love that God shares with us. But today he's giving us a different dimension of what also is involved with love. It is a challenge to love as God loves. And I think when we, when we try to do that, we run into difficulties because our selfish love gets into the way. Selfish love is what I want. The love that Jesus is talking about is the love that cannot be kept. It needs to be shared. And that's why when he says, I have a baptism of fire to experience, he's talking about when he realizes, and one of my favorite quotes you know, from the scriptures, of course, is when Jesus looks at each of us and he says, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they're doing. He's talking about me. He's talking about you. And then he is saying, as I have lived and as I love you, you and I must live in the same way. That's when it gets challenging. We're looking for the easy way out, and it isn't. There is no easy way out. So then we come back to St. Paul today, where he talks about love, and he says, love is, it cannot even be imagined. But the goodness of love is all about, and how God loves us. I always look at it and say, God loves us unconditionally. We cannot earn God's love. It is given to everyone. And then we wonder and say, well, how could that be? Because when we love each other, it is so fickle at times. It is so little or not at all. As a matter of fact, we have the opposite of love. We have hate. And we do that whenever we reject anyone. So what is God? What is Jesus trying to tell us? What is St. Paul trying to tell us? He says we need to be open to God's love. And when God's love comes into our hearts, and when we open it, there has to be a transformation. There has to be a letting go of the obstacles that prevent us from loving each other as God loves us. Easy? No, I think that makes sense. You know, what the character in the brothers Karamazov in that, in that story tells us. It is challenging. It's harsh. It is difficult to love unconditionally. And yet that is what God offers to each of us. So today we celebrate the feast of St. Paul of the Cross. And his whole mission was he looked at that one aspect of Jesus' love, that unconditional love, and the sacrifice that Jesus made in order to redeem us to bring us back into God's fold. And then he invites us to do the same for each other. St. Paul tells us when we love that way, we cannot even imagine the miracles that will happen. The miracles of us becoming transformed to become more and more like God, who is already present in our lives. But we keep up the walls and say, not yet, Oh, this is too hard. I can't do this. We have so many different ways of ignoring that 
and of walking away from it. And in the meantime, we keep suffering the division and the dividedness that comes every day in some way. So today, let us pray the prayer that we often pray. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in us the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and we shall be created, and you will renew the face of the earth, and you will renew each and every one of us, so that we can learn how God loves us. So with trust and humility, let us lift our voices to God. Today we pray for the Church that it provides refuge and salvation to all people. Let us pray to the Lord. For leaders at every level, that they include the voices of young people, the elderly, those who have no power, and that they make decisions that will be lasting for everyone. For this we pray to the Lord. For all who claim the name of Christian, that God's spirit of unity may lead us to new opportunities to reach out and to love each other as God loves us. For this we pray to the Lord. For all those who suffer because of the elements of the weather, and of the injustices that take place, the refusal of accepting everyone as God's children, that somehow the divisiveness will eventually become peace. For this we pray to the Lord. That we ask the Holy Spirit to guide us and give us the confidence to reach out, especially in times when, times when things are difficult, when we don't understand what is happening in our lives, that we give up the, the blaming aspect of that life and put our trust and confidence in the Lord, accepting his in invitation to us to pick up our crosses and follow him. For this we pray to the Lord. For a moment now, let us offer to the Lord our own petitions. For all of these intentions, let us pray to the Lord. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for constantly affirming us of your love for us. Help us to become more and more like you in the way we reach out to others. And we make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. To your goodness we have this bread and wine to offer which earth has given and human hands have made. They will become for us our spiritual food and drink. And now let us pray that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look upon the sacrificial gifts we offer you, Almighty God, in commemoration of St. Paul of the Cross, and grant that we who celebrate the mysteries of the Lord's Passion may imitate what we now enact. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, 
to Christ our Lord. For as in the festival of St. Paul of the Cross, you bid your church rejoice. So too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life, teach her by his words of preaching, and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with the company of angels and saints, we too say the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Ronald our Bishop and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. And let us take a moment to remember them by name. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, our faithful spouse, Saint Paul of the Cross, Saint Therese, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we now dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with each one of you. Thank you. 
and now let us reach out and share in some safe way the peace of Christ with each other. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. somebody in the back with the wheelchair on the side over here, okay? Body of Christ. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. Body of Christ. The 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 body of Christ. Body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. God bless. Body of Christ. The 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 body of Christ. God bless.
we proclaim Christ crucified, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. Let us pray. O God, who in St. Paul have wonderfully made known the mystery of the cross, graciously grant that drawing strength from the sacrifice, we may cling faithfully to Christ and labor in the church for the salvation of all. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord is with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our Lady of Mount Carmel, St. Therese, St. Paul of the Cross, our Mass is now ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord and one another. Have a wonderful day. Keep warm.